at section one, implicit differentiation, out of chapter five, symbolic differentiation, out of business calculus with Excel. In the last chapter, we looked at derivatives where y was derived, defined as a function of x. In this section, we're looking at two functions that are related, but not solved in terms of each other. However, one is an implicit derivative of the other. The basic setup is I have some curve that may not be a function. However, if I look at a portion of it, I'll have a portion of it where it is a function. And so we'll say y is implicitly a function of x. And we're then going to use the chain rule to try and solve that, to try and find the derivative. There are two approaches computationally. In one approach, I've decided in advance what I'm taking the derivative with respect to. So if it was y with respect to x, then the derivative of y with respect to x is dy dx. The second is I treat variables symmetrically and use differentials. In that case, I'm going to change my formula so to say the derivative, the differential of x to the n is n times x to the n minus 1 times the differential of x. Either method works, it's a matter of taste. We'll notice that implicit differentiation can be done with online calculators, like we did regular derivatives with online calculators. In our construction of examples, we'll start with one that I can do either way. Either I can solve y as a function of x, or I can implicitly differentiate. Then we'll move on to examples where solving would be hard or impossible, so I really want to do the implicit differentiation. Finally, we'll look at an example from economics. As a normal practice, I'll have examples that aren't the same as the examples in the textbook so that you get a second flavor. The first example I want to look at is an ellipse. I want to look at 4x squared plus 9y squared equals 36. It's pretty straightforward to see that this is an ellipse going up and down 2 and left and right 3. And I'm going to be interested at the tangent line at that point there. I'm going to say 1 comma 4 thirds the square root of 2. I've computed a point there. I want to know the slope of the tangent line at that point. Now this is an equation that it's relatively straightforward to solve for y. And so I have that 9y squared equals 36 minus 4x squared. y squared equals 36 minus 4x squared divided by 9. y equals plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 4x squared over 9. Since I'm talking about the top side, I'm talking about plus. So y equals the square root of 36 minus 4x squared over 9. Some simplification comes in at this point. I can see that this is the square root of 4 minus 4x squared over 9. I pull the 4 out. It becomes a 2. So this is 2 times the square root of 1 minus x squared over 9. Having done that, I can take the derivative. y prime is 2 times a half times 1 minus x squared over 9 to the minus 1 half times the derivative of the inside, so minus 2x over 9. Some simplification is in order. The 2 and the 1 halves cancel. The minus stays there. So minus 2x over 9 times the square root of 1 minus x squared over 9. If I want to look at y prime evaluated at x equals 1, that's going to be minus 2 over 9 times the square root of 1 minus 1 ninth minus 2 9 times the square root of 8 ninths minus 2 
9 times 2 thirds the square root of 2. Going to invert and multiply. Minus 2 over 9 times 2 over 3. We invert it when we multiply it. I have the square root of 2 on the bottom. That's the same thing as the square root of 2 over 2. 2's cancel, 3's cancel, and I get m minus the square root of 2 over 6. And so this is a problem I can do by the old-fashioned way, but now I want to consider what happens if I try it with implicit differentiation. We start with the same problem. 4x squared plus 9y squared equals 36. I'm going to hit everything in sight by the derivative with respect to x. The derivative of 4x squared is going to be 8x plus 9 times 2y times the derivative of y with respect to x. And that's going to be the derivative of 36 is 0. Moving the 8x to the other side, I have 18y dy dx equals minus 8x dy dx is minus 8x over 18y or minus 4x over 9y. I plug in my values. So the derivative of y with respect to x evaluated at x equals 1. I'm going to get minus 4 on top. 9 times 4 over 3 the square root of 2 minus 4 times 3, there's 9 times 4, the square root of 2 is left on the bottom, I make that the square root of 2 over 2, and I'm going to get minus the square root of 2 over 6. I think the second way was easier. The other way to do it, I notice that there are two ways of doing problems like this. I could have looked at this instead and started with my problem is 4x squared plus 9y squared equals 36. This could have been 8 times x times dx plus 18 times y times dy equals 0. I still get dy over dx. I've had to bring that to the other side, so I have minus 8x over 18y it's the same answer we got the other way. And so this has us doing implicit differentiation where we either can do the implicit differentiation or we can solve explicitly for the function first. I now want to look at a case where I really want to do it by implicit differentiation because I don't know how to solve for the function. Suppose I'm starting with 5q cubed plus 4p squared q plus p cubed equals 10. I know the point 1, 1 is on the graph. I can plug it in and see that. I want the tangent line. I'm going to eventually want dq, dp dq, so I'm going to hit everything in sight by the derivative with respect to q. This becomes 15q squared. I need to do a chain a product rule on this problem. I'm going to get 8 times p times the derivative of p with respect to q times q, that was the derivative of the first times the second, plus 4p squared, that's the first, times the derivative of q with respect to q, that's just 1, plus 3p squared times the derivative of p with respect to q, and that equals 0. I now want to simplify, I want to solve for dp dq, and when I do that, I bring everything with a db, dp dq to the left, and everything without it goes to the right. So dp dq, I'm going to have this term. So I get 8 times pq. I have this second term here, plus 3 times p squared equals, I add minus since I'm bringing it across the equal sign, 
15q squared plus 4p squared. Dividing through, we see that dp dq is equal to minus quantity 15q squared plus 4p squared all over 8pq plus 3p squared. This is one that we can do symbolically. So I do the implicit derivative calculator. I'm getting the same three top ones that I got before. I'm going to go with the one with steps. I've already set the problem up. So I want the derivative of p cubed plus 4p squared times q plus 15q squared equal to 10. In my options, I needed to say this was implicit differentiation. I'm differentiating with respect to q, and my function variable is p. I tell it to go, and it gives us the same answer we had found. And if I ask it to show steps, it goes through the same kind of steps we did. Take the derivative of everything with respect to q. I'm going to, in the first one, break that up into the various pieces. The second one, the derivative of a constant is 0. The derivative of q squared is 3q squared. The derivative of p squared cubed is the derivative of p squared times of p. That step comes down. The derivative of p squared, it's going to be 2p times the derivative of p, and the derivative of q is just 1. The derivative of p with primes, they bring the primes out front and get the same answer. The last example I want to look at is the Cobb-Douglas equation. This comes from economics. We basically have that there's a fixed amount, some constant, times labor to the alpha, times capital to the beta. We're going to say that alpha plus beta equals 1. And so for my particular example, I'm going to look at y equals 100 labor to the 1 fourth capital to the 3 fourths. And today I say I'd like to find DLDK. How much does labor change as I change the amount of capital? If I do this, I'm going to take everything in sight, multiply by the, uh, apply the derivative with respect to k, I'm going to get 0 equals 100 times 1 fourth labor plus 3 fourths L to the 1 fourth k to the minus 1 fourth. I'd like to do some simplification. I'm going to do things to clear terms. I'm going to divide everything in sight by 100 to get rid of that. I'm going to multiply by 4 to get rid of fractions. I'm going to multiply by L to the 3 fourths so that I get rid of my negative exponent there. I'm going to multiply by K to the 1 fourth to get rid of the other negative exponent. And I get 0 equals L to the 0, DLDK, times K, plus 3, L to the 1, K to the 0, which when I solve, I get DLDK. I'm going to have to bring the, uh, I've got K times DLDK. I'm bringing 3L to the other side, so it's minus L. So dl dk equals minus 3l over k. And so this gives me, as I change my capital, how much, as I add capital and add automation, I decrease the amount of labor I need. Thank you.